Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be making a screwdriver holder for your tool chest. Well, it's a simple project, but it's an extremely functional one. And let me just tell you how it all came about. Um, anyone who watched my shop tour knows how much I absolutely hate pegboard. I, I just, as functional as it is, I really don't like it. So I managed to be able to get rid of my uh, pegboard, and uh, now the wall kind of looks like that. But in order to get rid of that pegboard, I needed somewhere to put all of my tools. And that was uh, kind of fixed by getting this, and which I love. It's awesome. But the problem is, uh, is the screwdrivers really don't have a home. So let's head over there and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Well, here we are over at the tool cabinet and... Um, you guys know what I'm like. I like a place for everything and everything in its place. And this drawer here holds uh, my screwdrivers, um, but this kind of setup, this drives me crazy. Um, I mean, they just end up getting thrown in all over the place. I can't stand it. So, I don't know. Maybe it, it, I'm OCD, who knows? But either way, something has to be done about this. And today what we're going to do is we're going to make uh, a rack to go in here that will house these screwdrivers and it's going to keep them nice and organized and nice and neat. Well, the first thing you want to do is get your screwdrivers. And uh, I'm lucky in the fact that with my screwdrivers, um, they're all the same brand kind of thing. And uh, being a tradesperson, I like a certain... Uh, brand of screwdriver and this is what I go with but get all the screwdrivers that you want on this rack and sit them on your bench and what you want to do is lay them out in the order that you want to see them in this rack so let's start with that lay them out in the order you want them now you can make this project out of any kind of stock you want but I'm going to be using some three-quarter pine because I've got some sitting up in the rack and uh, why not? I mean you could use maple, walnut, plywood, whatever you want to do, MDF. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this three-quarter pine, now that I've got my screwdrivers laid out the way that I want them in this uh, rack, and I'm just going to take it over, lock it into the vise, and just make sure that it's got a nice flat edge on one side. Well, we've checked the edge with a straight edge, and uh, using the hand plane, we've got this perfectly straight uh, and flat on this uh, one edge. Now we're going to take it over to the table saw and just trim up this side, just to make sure that we're dealing with two perfectly flat uh, edges on this one board. Well, we got the board way down here. It's <clears throat> squared up, or sorry, flattened on both sides. Both sides are parallel. And we've squared up the ends and I mean you can check to make sure that it fits with all your screwdrivers here and I'd just like to point out that the size of this board is going to vary depending on how many screwdrivers you want to put on it and uh, in this particular case uh, I just measure it here I was only going by uh, by sight but it's 16 and a half long and it looks to be uh, two and three quarter inches wide. Again, that's going to vary depending on how many screwdrivers you wish to actually put on to this rack. So the next step that you want to do at this point in time, you've got your screwdrivers laid out and you want to measure each handle and each shaft of these screwdrivers and I'm going to use uh, calipers. You can use a measuring tape, it doesn't matter. This is not an exact science here. And you just want to get it to the closest uh, size over what the screwdriver is. So this one here 
uh, is going to be an inch and a quarter. It's actually one and fifteen sixty-fourths. So what you're going to do is that's the handle. So up here, just just mark that the first one is an inch and a quarter, and then, like I said, check the shaft, and the shaft, and this one is five sixteenths. So just below that, we're going to write five sixteenths. So we know that the shaft of that first screwdriver is got a one and a quarter inch wide handle and five sixteenths inch shaft. Then take your next one and measure your handle. This one is a little smaller, um, it looks like, but it's going to end up to be one and three sixteenths, but one and a quarter will still work in this case. So we're going to mark it up as one and a quarter. And again, these aren't exact. You just won't, don't want them to be undersized. And we're going to check this here now. The shaft will be three sixteenths of an inch. Just like that. So we're going to go along and measure each of these and mark them on our piece of paper. Now, I have decided on our board here, when our screwdrivers, or in this case my screwdrivers, sit in the rack, I would like to have three-eighths of an inch of material left at the bottom. So you really want to take a piece of three-eighths material, sit it on whatever the thickest handle is of your screwdrivers, and just make sure that your drawers are going to open and close, that there's not going to be interference. Um, that's an important step you want to have a look at. So I've determined that three-eighths is a good bit of material here, uh, in order to to clear the the opening for the drawer and still have my screwdrivers sit uh, nicely in this rack. I've also found that all of these handles, even though there are smaller ones and larger ones, uh, an inch and a quarter hole is going to suffice for all of them. So to leave three eighths of material at the bottom and an inch and a quarter hole, the bottom of the hole is going to have to end at that 3 8 So if you take the size of your hole and divide it in half, um, an inch and a quarter hole divided in half will leave you 5 8 of an inch. And then of course you add 3 8 of material and that will leave you with 1 inch. Um, I hope that made sense to you, but at this point in time now, for me anyway, we're going to want to draw a line at one inch on both sides of this board and this will be the point at where we are going to be drilling our holes. So here we have the marks made and I can see already that we're going to have a problem here and that problem is going to be that our inch and a quarter holes are most definitely going to encroach onto our shaft holes. So I'm going to start this all over and uh, get a second board for the shaft holes. So bear with me while I prep that up. See, I don't script these. I fly by the seat of my pants every show. Okay, I've gone and prepped a second piece of pine here for the shafts and I'll just draw that line at the one inch mark for um, the centers of our holes. And for those of you that may not have understood that, uh, I'll just give a quick explanation here. If this is the edge of your board and you want three-eighths of an inch of material left after your hole has drilled in, this measurement here at three-eighths plus half or the radius of your circle will give you the center point of your hole. So in this case it would be 3 8 and half of an inch and a quarter is 5 8 Well that's 8 8 Nobody says that. What they say is 1 inch. If that made sense, I hope so. But that's the center point of our holes. Well it's time to start drilling. <clears throat> but we can't drill until we know where to drill. So because this is a custom application with each one of these screwdrivers being different, we're going to be drilling the holes individually in the board. Um, we're going to drill them one at a time and then space them out as we go as well as the shaft. So I know that sounds a, like a pain in the butt, but in the end of it all, it's going to be worth it. <laughs> 
pain in the butt in the end. <laughs> See what I did there? I didn't even mean to do it. Anyway, carrying right along. Uh, we've got to mark our first hole and I'd like to leave a quarter of an inch material at the end of the board. We know we need to get in five eighths of an inch to get into the center of our hole. So that means that with a quarter inch on the end and five eighths into the center, that's seven eighths of an inch. So this will be our first hole and we'll mark it on both boards, seven eighths of an inch in um, on each one because these boards are identical and the center point of each of the holes should be exactly the same even though the holes are different. So we're going to mark this at seven eighths of an inch in. And at this point in time what you may want to do is mark which board is which. So this will be our top board or our handle board and this board here will be our shaft board and you may want to mark that so you don't mix up what you're drilling. So with that being said now and that one starting point measurement marked out you're going to want to refer to your little diagram here and your first hole in the handle board will be an inch and a quarter and the handle for the or the hole for the shaft will be at five sixteenths. So let's go ahead and drill those two through holes. And with that now our first set of holes is done. The inch and a quarter for the um, handle of the first screwdriver and the five sixteenths hole for the shaft of the first screwdriver. And when you get the first one done Tick them off on your list like I've just done there so that you don't get confused and drill the wrong holes or the same hole twice. Now I'm lucky enough in that um, I have two drill presses so I have set the fence uh, for the inch and a quarter hole for the handles um, and left the inch and a quarter Forstner bit in that drill press. Uh, on my smaller drill press now that's what I will be drilling the shaft holes with. So now we need to figure out exactly where we want our next screwdriver and I would like to get it uh, a one-eighth of an inch gap in between each one. So you're gonna have to measure over now an eighth of an inch plus the five-eighths of an inch and that of course will be three-quarters. So three quarters from the edge of this hole will be the center of your next hole. Whatever that measurement ends up to be, because you may change yours for the distance between your screwdrivers, you have to mark that hole exactly the same on your shaft uh, board. And make sure that they line up. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, we're going to go ahead and mark all of these holes all the way across. And it's easy enough to figure out because all the handles will be the same. So we're going to go ahead and mark every center hole all the way across. Then we're going to take it over to the drill press and drill all the inch and a quarter screws, or holes rather. Then we're going to take it over to the small drill press and drill all the required holes for the different size shafts that we have on these screwdrivers. And once we get all those holes marked then and drilled, then we're going to come back and we'll talk about what we're going to do next with it. Well here we have our boards all drilled, um, all according to the drawing or the list of holes that we marked out earlier. And now what we want to do is I want to set the fence on my table saw for a one inch rip and we're gonna rip right down this line which would be in the dead center of each one of these holes. So let's head over to the table saw and uh, we'll go ahead and we'll rip that. Well now that we've got that done the next thing that we need to do is do a little bit of a test fit. So we can go ahead and lay our drivers in here just to make sure that they sit properly and, you know, 
that they're not going to be shifting all over the place. And it's actually, it's actually not too bad. But, I mean, the alignment could be a little better for my liking. And we're going to correct that in a different kind of a way. The way that this works now is that, although it is fairly sturdy, it could shift in the toolbox. So with that now, what we're going to do is we're going to flip these over and we're going to drill some 3 8 holes in the underside of this and that's going to accept some rare earth magnets. So you can use half inch magnets, quarter inch magnets. I happen to have some 3 8 ones, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to drill some uh, flush Forstner 3 8 inch holes in the bottom of each one of these pieces to accommodate these magnets. Well, we've got our holes drilled for our magnets. And uh, what we're going to do first is give this a light hand sanding to take off any of the rough edges, uh, any of the burrs caused by the drilling. And then I'm going to use a little bit of CA glue to glue in our magnets. Uh, for those of you who don't know what CA glue is, um, super glue. And as you can see now, we've got our magnets glued in there. And they are going to go a long way to holding this in place without shifting. So what you want to do, and I know this sounds trivial, but get a square and put it up against the edge of your drawer and lay in your one piece. Just let it sit there like that. I mean, I know the square, like, really, Kenny, a square? Yeah, really, a square. Don't accept something being out of whack just for the sake of it being, you know, out of whack. Don't just throw it in there. You're trying to get things organized. If uh, shop organization isn't your gig, maybe you're watching the wrong show. But anyway, so get the square. Line up one of your drivers there the way that you like it, just like what I'm doing here. And I think I'm going to have this all the way to the top, just like that, to support the driver. And then this one here is the shortest driver that I have, being this, uh, this nut driver. So once again, I'm going to get the square, I'm going to line it up, I'm going to sit this nut driver to the point where it sits nicely, just the way I like it. And once I get it sat there, the way that I like it, and it's squared up, now I can go ahead and take the rest of my drivers and lay them in place the way that I decided was uh, a good way in the beginning when I set this whole thing up. And all you got to do is just lay them in place. So I'll go ahead and do that. And once you get them laid in place like that, you will be done. there you have it. A simple project that really organizes the drawers of your tool chest and really it cleans up some, some room because instead of those screwdrivers rolling all over the place every time you open or close a drawer, now of course they sit put and you can utilize the space that they would have been rolling around for something else. So let me just step aside here and uh, we'll show you what it was like before I put this in. And this may not bother some people, but to me, that's a mess. And of course, after. Way better in my opinion. A uh, little bit of overkill? Maybe. Maybe. You decide. My shop. And that's the way I like it. I like it clean and neat and everything in its place. And uh, really, guys, once you get the shop organization and the housekeeping under wraps, everything else falls into place. It's so much easier to work in an organized and clean shop. And this little small project 
is just one little step closer to being able to help you achieve that. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you've appreciated this week's show and I hope you like it and I hope you're going to try it out for your shop. Thanks for watching and I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video. Thank <laughs> you.